What's going on guys? I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Actually, I'm sitting here waiting for my group um, in Salt Lake and the stock market has been going crazy today. And the uh, quantum theme looks like it it uh, has done very, very, very well today. Um, some of the stocks, especially D-Wave, QBTS, was looking for its all-time high again, especially after some pretty crazy sell-off yesterday. So really incredible turnaround on these stocks and a lot of uh, just bullish sentiment in the market in general. It's uh, really a sight to see. It's it's a beautiful thing. Um, and we saw this through the whole market really, um, but especially Quantum got a lot of love today. So. If you're a quantum investor, um, go out this weekend and buy yourself, you know, a double cheeseburger, make it a combo. You earned it. You deserved it. We go, we go through it and, uh, we, we've been in, in ups and downs and everything in between. And <clears throat> there's more to come. There's a lot of volatility in this trade. Um, we saw the volatility show itself a little bit yesterday uh, when we saw a lot of the quantum names down six, seven, eight percent. But today, really, they recovered and then some. So really incredible. Anyway, hello from Salt Lake City. Uh, congratulations to everyone. And let's jump in. You guys, happy Friday. Happy Friday. I really mean that. If you if you're a quantum investor, just think about the year of 2025 and the fact that in 2025 we have seen quantum stocks crash by 50, 60 percent overnight on Jensen's comments in January, and we've seen a lot of these growth tech stocks sell down and get washed out to their bare minimums in the Trump tariff phase. And now we're starting to see this strength in the sector after some sell-off yesterday. And it's just, you know what, like for those of you who have stuck this out and have uh, stayed in these tickers, despite all the noise, despite all of the the FUD that's out there, congratulations, you know, go go out and get yourself a milkshake, buy yourself something nice because today was extraordinary. We saw unbelievably bullish price action through the whole quantum sector and there's a lot of money being made. I, it doesn't matter if you're long on these names or if you're a day trader or if you're a momentum or swing trader, it does, it doesn't really matter because these, these, uh, tickers, I mean, look at, look at this. ARQQ alone today did 18.45%. And we talk about like, we talk about returns on investment, right? Think about what a bond yield is for an entire year. If you tie up your money for an entire year, what are you going to get from a bond yield? What, 5%? 4%? The S&P 500 over the last two years has returned somewhere in the range of 20%. And what you just saw in one day in the stock market is one quantum stock outperform, outperform in one day almost the entire S&P 500. And that's... And that's of course, these stocks are volatile and sure, Monday they could sell down or they could grow again. But the, the thing is with these stocks and what's so, what, what is a point that's often missed with quantum is this sector is growing. Money, money from private and public investors is going to keep pouring in to these names and Sure, the, the valuations might be very, very stretched or completely unrealistic. But also, when we do have Q Day, when we have that cyber attack, a company like ARQQ or LAES is going to move 
up tenfold or twentyfold or thirtyfold because the value to the to society will increase so much in that post quantum security. And we see that QUBT, which is going to be included in the Russell two thousand and three thousand. Um, I'm not overly bullish on QUBT because I personally reached out to the company and I haven't got a response from them, and and they only took one question in their earnings call, but. They're working on photonics, quantum computing, and they're getting ready to be bought up by a bunch of index funds. QBTS today, after some really sharp, like seven or eight percent sell off, posted a 13 percent day and was starting to inch towards its all time high, which is crazy when you think about it. And even quantum emotion ended up above the one dollar critical kind of psychological point LAES, which I think is criminally underpriced. If you if you think about a quantum play that actually matters, um, LAES and their post-quantum cybersecurity and, and the work they're doing, their acquisition of IC Alps, LAES is the big bear AI of quantum. And Ion Q still struggling to hold $40, but I actually, when you look at the fact that Ion Q was $18 at one point this year, not bad at all. Rigetti was actually up more today and ended up 3%. And you know what? Rigetti is a self-proclaimed R&D company. So if a Rigetti hangs around a $10 or $12 price point, I think people would be very happy with that. I, I don't know if, if you're expecting a huge return on investment from Rigetti. That would be a stock or technical chart rally, which could happen. Rigetti can get very... Um, explosive when it does start moving. But we see that QBTS had pretty high volume today, almost half, more than half the volume of NVIDIA. And the whole stock market did really nicely today. So that's a lot of green. That's a lot of bullishness. That's a lot of optimism across the board, really. Even Tesla and all the stuff that's been going on with Tesla. We talked about that last night. But one thing to, to look at is, is Google. I, I still think that Google is underpriced based on their PE and all their business pillars. People keep overlooking the fact that they have the majority stake in Waymo and Waymo is doing some crazy amount of driverless rides and parents prefer to send their kids in a driverless vehicle because not only is it cheaper, but they feel more safe because there's not some random person driving their child around. So, so there's all this bullishness that's built up around Tesla deploying their first driverless cars, but Waymo's already doing it. Waymo's been growing year over year over year. And, and Google, I mean, you're watching this on YouTube right now. I think YouTube premium is probably, I, I have all of the streaming services and YouTube premium is easily uh, one of the best, if not the best value for the money. I mean, essentially for $13.99 a month, you're getting ad-free access to the entire video library of the internet or or damn near close. Uh, pretty insane. And, and then being able to follow content creators. I mean, and, and subscribe and engage with content creators. And I wasn't always a content creator on YouTube, but I was definitely using YouTube premium and I was following a lot of channels. And the beautiful thing about YouTube is you can really cater your interests to you, the YouTube alg algorithm is really good. So if you're into hunting and fishing, there's so many channels out there for hunting and fishing there, or if you're into quantum stocks, here I am. If you're into any, any of your interests, any of your hobbies, YouTube is just amazing. And then that's just YouTube. And then there's still search. There's still AI. There's still Google ads. There's still Chrome. Uh, there's all these business pillars and it's still one of the cheapest mag seven stock. So I bought a lot of Google this year and, um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit overweight Google, more overweight NVIDIA since NVIDIA is the son of the AI revolution, but Google is, is probably my second favorite mag seven and Amazon as well. So nice to see the mag seven doing well. So we're going to look at D wave and we know that D wave yesterday had this 
pretty sharp move to the downside. It had a 9% day. And actually, uh, today, D-Wave actually had a almost a 10% move to the downside. And it was in my video last night, I was saying a lot of these quantum stocks might be breaking their bullish trend, but there's this insane V-shaped recovery on increased volume. So we can see a, even just looking at the the candles that we just got a lot of bullish green volume. And I saw a theory that maybe it was the algorithms kicking in. So the, the shorts would have to cover. Um, and that was kind of creating a self being loop, but there is a lot of optimism. There wasn't a lot of sell off, uh, even later in the day on, on the ticker. You can see that it, it held a strong price point. And then if we look back just one month, we see that we actually came back up into this price range that is really the nosebleeds for D wave. And to see it close here is incredibly bullish for D wave because the last time it got up into this area, it made its all time high. So I think D wave is starting to look like maybe it's looking for 20. So let's draw kind of this rising support and we're going to go down to this sell off yesterday. And if we look at it from that perspective, we close well above the rising support. If uh, we just connect the bottom of the candles and we also closed above an area of support as well. We've seen a couple of bounces um, and we've seen some resistance as well at this number. So incredibly bullish day for D wave and a very strong close. You know, this is just one of those days that I can pick any stock and it did really well. So it wasn't even just limited to quantum, but I'm just going to talk about SoFi because I, I'm a big investor in SoFi and I love SoFi. I love what they're doing. And I think they're going to be a really big bank in not too long. And, and essentially what SoFi is doing is they are the, they're kind of like this amalgamation of a super app and student loans and checking and savings and any financial service you could possibly want all in one place and super easy to use and a really good app and fun to use too. They have rewards and different things. They have SoFi Plus and SoFi is just a really intriguing investment because it just gives you the opportunity to get in on the ground floor of an exciting, financially strong bank. So when we talk about quantum, you know, quantum is there's a lot of hope built into quantum, but there's a lot of money built into SoFi. So if you're the type of person that likes to see the money, then look at SoFi's financials. And I think it speaks for itself. So they just posted their best quarter ever beating estimates, but you could say that for the last three, four quarters, revenue continues to increase. They're going to come and do it again. Uh, they're also, they tend to sandbag a little bit. So that means they tend to give lower guidance and then they come out and beat their estimates and then they raise guidance, beat and raise, beat and raise. And so we see that analysts have buy hold with the least at the cell and it, it is trading at a, at a high PE um, and potentially it's getting some of that tech multiple because they also have their uh, tech platform as well. So SoFi for me is, has been a frustrating stock to own because it just doesn't move like these other growth stocks. It, it moves kind of in a sluggish, slow way, but at one point in this year, in January 2025, this stock was trading at $18. And then when all the stocks got washed out, this, this thing went down to eight bucks. So if you were buying stocks in early April, congratulations, because pretty much any ticker you can imagine has made a V-shaped recovery at this point. And look at that, 67% on SoFi. 
And SoFi still has a lot of room to run. So if we look at if if SoFi is starting wanting to move to its all time highs, there's still a healthy amount of upside. And that's just assuming that it stops at its all time highs. I, I think SoFi should be twenty five. $30 a share just based on their ability to print money and the fact that they're a disruptor in the banking ecosystem. And the price action has been really bullish, really bullish. We can see volume has been coming in and then there's been sell-off. And this is the frustrating thing with, with SoFi is you're going to see this gap, these gap ups and sell-off gap ups, sell off. And, but what's, what's actually happening over the longer term is we're building a, you've heard me say it on this channel so many times, but we're, we can pretty easily draw out what's happening here. And there's a pretty consistent uptrend. And you can see that the uptrend was a lot more sharp and then there was some sell off, but there does seem to be some acceleration in the buying of SoFi and their earnings are still a ways away. So I think this might be kind of uh, some investors front running their next earnings, but it's going to be hard to keep SoFi down. I, I know that Wall Street has done its best to keep Wall Street down. Uh, excuse me, Wall Street has done its best to keep SoFi down, but this bank is not going anywhere and they are printing money. Um, and I think that for family and friends, I'm not recommending quantum stocks. I think quantum stocks are very risky and you have to have the right mindset, and right, right risk tolerance um, and ha have done your own due diligence for, for um, quantum names. But this, but SoFi is, is just really uh, a beautiful situation with SoFi. So, you know, I'm out here and, I, and I'm out here in Salt Lake City. And of course, I'm sitting in my car and I'm waiting for my group. And, and uh, there's the great Salt Lake. And, and why not? Why not? Quantum. <laughs> comes uh, the quantum RV comes by. I've never seen a quantum RV before, um, but there it was. There's the beautiful Salt Lake. I was actually born here and raised here for quite a few years. And uh, there's a bird and some family enjoying the view. Anyway, guys, that is all I've got for today. Congratulations. I'm going to be on probably multiple times, just enjoying some rest here in the hotel room, um, covering different stocks uh, because there were so many amazing stories in the stock market today. Hope you all had a good time. We'll talk to you soon.